We're going to have a lesson on care of cast iron cookware, and I prefer cooking on cast iron. These are the items that you would use to uh, clean a cast iron skillet. This is what you do not use. You do not use soap on a cast iron skillet. Reason being is cast iron is very porous, and that dish soap will go down in the pores, and then it'll leach out as you cook. Now, I have no problem using my Miracle 2 soap, because you saw me drink that yesterday. That won't contaminate the food. Here's another item you do not use. Orange cleaner. Maybe you burn something in the skillet. Once in a while you'll do that. You take the stiffest scraper you can buy. And you'll use that as to scrape the bottom of the skillet. However, the skillet's got a curve on the edges of it. You use a common tablespoon. And you go around the edges. Here's also a heavy duty scraper. And you notice that the corners are curved. Then you've got the uh, stainless steel scrubbing pad. You can fine clean them. And last but not least, grab your Miracle 2 soap. Give it a couple of shots of this. Add a little bit of water in the bottom and do this with the brush. And rinse it off. After you get it rinsed off, the most important thing to do is to take your trusty roll of paper towels. And you dry that skillet off. Moisture is the worst enemy of cast iron. It makes it rust real fast. And then you do one of two things. You can pour about a tablespoon of olive oil on the bottom of the uh, skillet. And then you take this paintbrush and you spread that all over that skillet. Another way to grease that skillet is common cooking spray. Olive oil in a spray bottle. Now here's three skillets in three typical conditions. This skillet was in a trailer fire at Christmas time. It laid out here in the driveway and got rained on seven months, eight months now. What month is it? We're going to remove the rust on this and refurbish it. This skillet was used to cook hamburgers and it got a little overheated. Now this skillet here is in pretty good shape. I uh, did the Miracle 2 soap and brush on it after I got through cooking and I don't know what I cooked in it. First one we're going to do is the rusty one, so I'm going to get it damped down real good with the Miracle 2 soap. And I'm going to try to scrub as much of this rust off as I can. You can see the rust coming off on there and then the Miracle 2 soap is getting brown. That means the rust is coming off. Good sign. You notice we got an awful lot of the rust out. This is the amount of rust I took out of there with that pad. Remember, moisture is your worst enemy on cast iron. Just a tad of oil on the bottom of it. Take the brush. I'm going to paint this with oil. There's still enough oil left in this brush. You don't want too much oil on the bottom anyway because you don't want to set it on fire when you turn the stove on. So this skillet is perfect and ready to go. I'd hang this one on the wall and cook in it tomorrow. This is my food storage rack, pantry if you will, and it's stacked like vegetables and tomato products, beans, and then meat products and fruit, soups. Normally I try to carry four cases of each item. You'll notice that box has got a number on the front. That means it was bought in 2006. So I always put the number of the year on the front of the box. That way I know which ones to eat first. And I've got food in that other storage area in the kitchen that has zero one on it. So we're talking about four year old food in a can and it still works. I could probably lock the door with my sprouts and wheatgrass juice and not even go to a grocery store for four years. And I've got enough different kinds of things that I guarantee you my uh, diet would be very varied. This is my 15 foot cubic foot freezer. It's normally kept full of meat. Right now it's about half full. Oh! This is a Boston butt roast. Probably about 10 pounds, $10.30. Can't buy it that cheap these days. Here's a country ham. It doesn't need to be refrigerated, but I put it in here because I had a hard time keeping the mice from eating on it. 
even though I had it hung on a wire in the closet. How they got up there, I don't know, but they did. This particular piece of meat is the front shoulder of a deer. Pull that thing out, bone it, put it in the crock pot until you can pull it apart with a fork. Add your veggies. You got one hell of a stew, country style. That meat didn't cost me anything but a rifle bullet. Here are some just normal beans, okay? I'm out of sprout seeds, so I can't. So we'll substitute this. So I'm just going to take a handful. And we're going to soak those for about 12 hours overnight. And they'll swell up. If you put a third of a cup of sprouts in a pint jar, fill the pint jar to the top, those seeds will swell to the point where there's seed coming up over the top of it. These are my sprouting trays. Notice they got holes in the bottom of them. That's for the water to drain out. You don't want your sprouts to uh, stay in water. And these trays have lids that stack. So I can take these trays and fill them full of seeds, but I can't eat them fast enough. I never fill three of these up. So if you had a big family, you would have you could make three of those trays. Now this pan here, I would fill with water. What I would do at least once a day, I would wash them sprouts. I've got a little bit too much water in this. And they would rinse the sprouts off. Otherwise they're gonna get slimy on you. And sometimes I'll put maybe one or two squirts of Miracle 2 in that water before I do that and that'll kill any slime that might want to grow on the sprouts. The reason I like sprouts, and I've yet to get a wheatgrass set up where I can grow wheatgrass and cut it and run it through a wheatgrass grinder. Two ounces of wheatgrass in a glass Rankin Daily would give you the same amount of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, Every nutrient the body would need, it's a live food. Two ounces of that a day would be like eating four pounds of chopped up fresh salad of vegetables, uh, cabbage, carrots, whatever. Now the meat's kind of in between, so you cook the fresh meat, fresh frozen meat, that's kind of semi alive. But that canned food in there is dead food. And if you eat that for four years, you're going to be a sick person. Your immune system is going to go down. The sprouts, which I use for salads, I also put on the top of a sandwich. And that wheatgrass juice is live food. And that, especially that wheatgrass, will give your immune system a boost as good as buying these $30 a bottle vitamins and you'd have to buy eight or ten different $30 bottles of vitamins to get the same thing that you can get from growing pennies worth of wheatgrass so it's 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 a cheap way of doing it you just grow the stuff on a cookie tray full of dirt and take a pair of scissors and you mow it like a lawn run it through the machine put the glass underneath it and hand grind it like one of the old-fashioned meat grinders how comes the juice? Uh oh. Hello. Yeah? 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 yeah. Who is this? Pat. Pastor Bob. Okay, now I got you.